sponsored in part by dollarseed.com for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs, all organic seeds, all only a dollar a pack. dollarseed.com and by willowspringssoap.com, handmade soaps with simple recognizable ingredients, making soaps using the cold kettle process while using traditional methods. willowspringssoap.com Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. I'm Joy Baird. Well, it's the middle of summer and you're dealing with weeds just like we are. Over here in our onion beet patch, we've got weeds everywhere. Now there's a technique to pulling weeds and then there's some debate whether or not you should pull the weeds at all. So let's talk about both of them. Simply, you want to get the weeds when they're early. It won't look like a lot, but if you can get them early, then you don't have to deal with a mass of foliage as we have here. But also when it's 105 degrees outside, that really deters you from going out in the garden and working. And I don't blame you for that. The best time to pull weeds with the weather is early in the morning or late in the evening. We have let this weed patch go strictly because we just don't want to get out in the heat and do it. Now, within this weed patch, there is a lot of edible items besides what we have planted. As you may be familiar, these are lamb's quarters or wild quinola, some people call it, or even goosefoot or tree spinach. Now, those are all that is an edible plant, and you can make it in pestos or put in salads and a number of other things. And if you want more information on what you can do with your lamb's quarter, if you have a lot of that in your garden, you can go to our friend Aaron at A Thatcher 85 YouTube channel, and I'll have a link for that in our show notes, and that can be found at our website at thewestconsinvegetablegardener.com. He's got a great video and tells a lot of the uh, great things you can do with quinola, or wild quinola, goosefoot, lamb's quarter, whatever title you want to give that plant. Well, we could eat it all, but that's a lot of greens to eat. So we're going to just go ahead and pull it up, put it in our compost bin, and we'll get the benefits back from it as it composts over the summer. Well, now that your plants are big, your weeds are big, that is, how do you pull them? Well, you want to pull them after a good rain. Not the, not the next day, not the day after, but the next day, and when it's not muddy, but moist. Well, we don't have that option here. So what we have done in this area, when we planted, we double dug this area, which makes the soil very loose and loomy, which allows the vegetables that we plant to grow very nice, as well as it allows us to be able to grab hold and remove the weeds and getting as much root as possible because if you leave the root in the ground, the will just regrow again. They're tough things. So we'll just go ahead and put that in our compost bin. And you'll just go through with larger ones. And once you pull the weed, you want to shake all that dirt off, regardless if you're putting it in your compost bin or disposing it in other means, because that soil is best in your garden. Now, one way to get away from the weeds that you have in your garden is you can go to the raised bed method or self-watering container. Now, with the weeds are smaller, we're going to look at a few tools that you may have or you can pick up very inexpensively that will help you deal with pulling the weeds out of your garden. Now, there's some debate whether or not you should pull the weeds in your garden or not, like we have over here in the onion patch. If we would pull all them weeds now, and the edible ones, we would allow the sun to penetrate the soil and extract as much, all the moisture out of the soil as possible. Now we're in a drought, so we feel that the benefit of leaving the weeds in place, well, though the weeds take water and moisture, it actually will shade the edible plants to the point where it's at balance, and we feel, in our opinion, that we're just gonna leave them so the sun doesn't bake the soil and allow, and that would not allow our edibles to grow very well. Well, when you deal with hand tools, there's a variety of hand tools you can choose from to remove the weeds from your garden. Now this is a self hand tool, uh, it's called a, a weed fork, and it's really designed to get deep down if you're going to extract dandelions, because dandelions have very long, deep penetrating roots. We almost got all that root, but that's the premise of the hand fork. And they come in a variety of different sizes too, where it has a more of a, a leverage to it. And then you could also use this to kind of, you know, ex loosen up some of the weeds and just cut them off to the top. Now, if you have a, move the soil around a lot, 
there's a chance of you ex uh, exposing weed seeds to the sun and that will allow them to grow up even more prevalent than what they may already be. Another tool you could use is a hand tool. It's got a point on one side and a rake on another uh, to get in here to chop up some grass and remove it from the area or just a handy trowel if you don't have a, a hand for it to get in there and try to get as much of that dandelion root as possible. Even though we didn't get it all, that will slow the regrowth down on it. And then we even have other tools that you can use to extract weeds from your garden that you don't even have to kneel down on. Another couple of things you want to be sure you have is a, a bucket for placing the weeds in to take to your compost bin. Some of you may want to invest in a good pair of gloves because some of these weeds are uh, sticky and has thistles on them and a nice kneeling pad that you can construct yourself or you can purchase one at your local home and garden center. Now some of the ways you can prevent from having to weed at all is to mulch. Now we use some straw around these tomatoes, tomatoes that we have planted and that's going to do two things. That's going to hold the moisture in the ground and it's going to prevent sunlight from penetrating the ground, evaporating the water, as well as keeping what weed seeds might be there in the dark to where they won't grow and I won't have to weed at all or very little at all. Another way you can go about doing it is you can put shredded paper around the base of your plants if you feel that the shredded paper is not going to harm your plants and we don't because it's soy ink so we don't feel that there's an issue with that but that's another way of uh, mulching to prevent from having to weed in areas that you don't want to. Alright, right here is where we had some spinach that went to seed at and just some tall, thistly, pokey weeds that I don't want to pull out. Now, if you pull these out, you would need gloves on. So we're just going to take our average ordinary garden hoe and we're just going to cut the plants down or the weeds down so we can get to the soil and get some more stuff planted. All you do is just run that across the top of the soil and most of the weeds will just be cut off at the base. Now the only disadvantage to this is, as you can see, you still left weeds, roots, in the soil and with a good rain those will begin to grow again and weeds that have a very thick stalk on it are hard to pull out or hard to cut with a hoe. So this is one method if you want to quick, quickly remove a lot of weeds in an area. You can use a garden hoe put these weeds in your compost bin and then you can come back and you can actually turn the soil over with a spade or a shovel or, and you can take a run a rake through it and then remove the rest of the weed roots. So that's another way of getting rid of some of the weeds in your garden if you're in an area where you no longer have anything growing. Those are just a few ways of helping you extract the weeds out of your garden, whether you have hand tools or tools like the garden hoe, and some ways to help prevent weeds from even starting to grow at all. I'm Joy Baird, and this has been a Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. Thank you for watching our extra. We here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener have a fun giveaway that we're going to run from now until July 31st. And I'll give you more of those details in just a minute, but I'm going to show you the, the fun items that you can win first. So one person is going to win all these items. We have a bumper sticker. We have a nice brightly colored mouse pad. We also have here four magnets that you can maybe give to others or hang up in your home or your office. Then we have this nice pen here that says the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener on it and it writes very nicely. Then we also have two extra bonus items. One is this fun reusable produce bag and it's nice drawstring opening and closing. We're not going to send you the butternut squash though. But the reusable produce bag is great for farmers markets. And a reusable snack or sandwich bag with a nice velcro opening that holds a lot of great stuff inside. So the way you sign up for the contest is you go to our website 
and you sign up for our weekly emails. You can see that on our website underneath the header, right underneath the picture of the scarecrows, and it says sign up for our weekly emails. If you've already signed up for our weekly emails, you're automatically entered into the contest. This is only open to residents of the United States and Canada, sorry. Um, and we're gonna also post all of the items you can win on our website as well. So if you have any questions or whatever, you can you can see that there. Also, we are opening um, a portion of our website up to where we're gonna put our recent podcasts and internet radios and blogs, things like that that we were guests on. And on the bottom of our website, if you have a blog, internet radio, podcast, blog talk, any of that, if you want us to be a guest on your show, we're going to put that at the bottom of our website for you to contact us. So go ahead, sign up for our weekly emails, sign up for a drawing, and then we'll let the winner know when they win um, around August 1st. And then if it's, if it's okay with you, we will put that information, your first name and where you're from on our Facebook page as well to let people know who won. So good luck and happy planting. For more organic gardening, visit the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com. For more organic gardening, visit the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com.